Um, progress is important. Um, we haven't really dug into flaws, and that's the next place I want to go. Um, I personally break down flaws by uh, character flaws being different from me from you know, physical limitations. And there is some blurred line between the character flaw, the physical mental limitations, and handicaps. Again, these are just ways that I've, I've learned to look at it. These are not necessarily strict definitions. It's not like you go to someone and, they, and, and you could go to any writer and say, what's the difference between a limitation and a handicap? And they'd be like, ah, one gets you a sticker, one doesn't. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Um, this is just my way of thinking of it. Uh, the way I divide it up is character flaws, it is the character's fault. Er's fault. All right. This is not the character's fault, but it is something internal they need to deal with. And these are external. external limitations, all right? So um, breaking it up this way helps me as a writer when I'm looking at my story and deciding how I'm going to tell this story, how to approach overcoming these things. If, one of you, if your character has a, a, a handicap, it isn't necessarily the right thing to like, you know, the story be about, um, about overcoming that. That's just a part of who they are. If your character has one arm and they want to be a, a football player, you don't want your story to be about them learning how to regrow genetically a new arm, probably. Um, this is a function of who they are. And it is something that they're going to have to deal with, certainly. But it is a factor. Of, it's something that, that, that is just external to them, usually. Another good example of a handicap is Aunt May in the Spider-Man movies. Um, you don't want Peter Parker to have to overcome Aunt May. I mean, you don't want his, it, there's no sort of arc there where he's like, you should just get rid of Aunt May. But Aunt May is a handicap, ha to having her. What's that? He has a chance. If I was Aunt May over Mary Jane, I wouldn't have done that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> um, that's going a different direction, but. Um, <laughs> Someone's very passionate with his Batman shirt about his comics. Um, oh, and Adam West Batman, even. Um, so external limitations. These are things your character is going to have to work with that we don't necessarily want them to overcome in any way. They're just there. All right? These can be helpful for, um, for filling out you know, what makes it harder for your character to do what they do. Um, physical and mental limitations. Um, these, for me, are just limits on what they're capable of doing. Um, for instance, if um, uh, this is Superman, he's got this whole kryptonite thing, right? He is going to have to overcome it. He's going to have to work around it. But for me, the sort of physical, mental limitations are just things for me to keep in mind. This is what they can't do. Um, this is actually Sanderson's second law of magic also, by the way. Um, I build my magic systems this way. Uh, they, they, there will be limitations to the magic system. They may cause character um, mo emotion and things like this, but basically this is just what that you can and can't do. Like I said, the lines between these are very blurry. Um, an external limitation, the, the one iron football player is probably more the physical limitation. Um, and this is, I'm looking at the external things. Um, but I'm building these two as things that aren't necessarily the character's fault, but still will have to be overcome in some way. These are the ones that are the character's fault that, that build your growth arc. All right? They are the character's fault. They are something the character can actively change. Um, they are important to who the character is when they begin the story, but they are not ne necessarily um, who the character has to be by the end of the story. And these are all the things you probably think of when we talk about flaws. But the thing to keep in mind is that um, when you're building these for your character, they don't need to be terribly um, awful things. Like when I say building character flaws, people are like, hmm, they're a sadist and they like to burn cats. Um, OK, that is indeed a deep character flaw. Um, 
But it can be something as simple as they're too shy, right? Um, this character is very shy, and they need to overcome their shyness. Um, this character is, um, you know, is exceptionally rude, and they learn, need to learn to not be exceptionally rude. This character always jumps into their problems feet first without thinking. Um, there, there are as many of these as there are people out there. Uh, and these are where you want to spend your time thinking and saying, I'm going to make my character more flawed. Why do we do this? Because it it's makes fun. them more relatable. It adds conflict. It adds conflict. Very good. It adds conflict. And if the character is flawed and more relatable, people will actually read your story and buy the book. That's right. That's right. I need to be throwing these out. Did you bring these again? Oh, awesome. There we are. You have, you've answered like a bunch. Here you go. There's three. Um, <laughs> Hey, who just answered that other one? It was somewhere over here. Woo! I'm going to throw it at you. Oh, there it's on the floor. Um, that's all right. Answer more questions, you'll get, then you'll get Sour Patch Kids. I'm going to throw you the oranges because I don't like those. Um, <laughs> building character flaws. This is, should be part of your process for developing a character these days. The reason being, as I said, the, the holy Superman characters don't, they, you know, they just aren't necessarily. They're just not that cool anymore. Uh, we've gotten beyond that. Um, there's a reason why the, the movie studios have had so much trouble rebooting Superman. Because Superman is a character from the old days. And ha coming up with a way that Superman can be interesting is tough. It's doable. Um, it, you do it by making him very relatable. And there, I'm certain there are other ways. But there's a reason why Batman has been so popular. Because Batman is flawed. Oh, Batman has so many flaws. And we're like, yes, you are so flawed, but you're also awesome. I want to re um, experience the story about you being flawed and awesome. And if you go back to the early Superman, mm -hmm. like the, the animated black and white, right. he's like flying over to Europe and beating up the fascists. It's not, yeah. it's not this realistic thing. It's more of like this allegory for yeah, yeah. Well, the storytelling was, was. See, what also made Superman like really relatable in the past was the fact that Superman, even though he, you know, had like all these superpowers and stuff like that, when it came to Lois Lane, his ideal girl, he was really shy about right, the whole thing. Right, right. And so that made him really relatable. Once he marries Lois Lane, now mm -hmm. he's got all these superpowers and he's got his dream girl, and Superman readership dropped like crazy, like nobody cared anymore. Right, right. I know that, and that is a very good thing. Superman, when he. He works, he has trouble relating. It's the Clark Kent that's interesting. Um, it's not the Superman. Um, and yeah. Um, if I remember typically, Superman character kind of changes a lot depending on like, the universes. And yeah, yeah. Every, they're, different writers have taken so many different takes on Superman. I'm curious to see how the new movie this summer does. Um, because it, it, everyone, you know, there's this exploration of how do we make Superman work? Um, 